I'd like to share with you a little bit of what I learned from last session. Um, go to the committee. We're going to be in public health and uh, juror prudence if uh, you're interested in the decrim. Um, go and watch, if you, you know, especially if you're from here and can actually just come and you know watch a few hearings early in the session. See how it goes. See how they act. You know, familiarize yourself with those spaces so that they're not so intimidating. Um, when you're going to uh, visit with your legislators, um, I, I like to look at it as uh, one letter is worth a, th uh, a hundred phone calls. One in-person visit is worth at least a hundred letters. So think about a thousand phone calls that you've just done with one in-person visit. Um, do a little research on your legislator. See, you, they, most of them have websites. Most of them even tweet. So find out what is you know, important to them personally in their own communities. Look up their, um, the legislation that they've worked on, that they've authored or sponsored in the past. Uh, find something that you have some common ground with them and you can stroke their egos with a little bit. Thank them. You know, so get to know them. Get to know them. Um, in the hearings, when you're actually there to testify, if you can't do it in love, don't do it. Uh, just excuse yourself. You know, if they call your name, if, if it's something that you have said, you know, you've heard as you're waiting has made you mad and you cannot act in love because, you know, most of us are righteously mad. This is ridiculous that we do not have access to a plant-based medicine that's never killed anybody. Give me a break. You know, um, I was in liver failure myself um, because of pharmaceuticals, you know, and I knew better. As a nurse, I knew better than to take all the pharmaceuticals. I needed to work. So, and, you know, I couldn't have cannabis in my system and work as a nurse. Um, but I lost my cool in the decrim hearing last session. I got mad. I pointed my finger at a legislator and shook it like this at him. Didn't help. <laughs> Didn't help. So it, I, you know, um, before the hearing for the affirmative defense, um, uh, another activist who's been at doing this in Texas for a long time, her advice to me, and she, she couldn't actually be here. She was actually on retreat, but she called me, and she says, hey, act in love, Tracy. Act in love. If you can act in love, don't act. And, I, you know, it clicked. It clicked with me. It really did. So Vincent's talking about um, facing demons. You guys know me as Nurse Tracy, patient advocate Tracy. I've never told my patient story before in a public setting. Um, I had juvenile rheumatoid arthritis as a child, systemic lupus by the time I was 20. Um, I've had severe, severe, uh, I have an irritable bowel uh, disease, not, I don't have Crohn's, um, and I've had, in, you know, a horrible, horrible reflux almost all of my life to the point that dentists used to think that I was bulimic. And I was like, no, no, I throw up so much, I don't, I can't make myself throw up. You know, um, that's not what it is. Um, but they thought that I was bulimic from all the, you know, I mean, and I really honestly think that a lot of my vomiting problems were from the pain medicines that I was given as a child. You know, and then um, I was in a car wreck when I was 17 and in a coma for three days. Um, so I hadn't had a brain injury. I have a nice divot in the top of my head up here where they drilled in to relieve the pressure and started having grand mal seizures eight months later. Um, so I'm a patient. I've never actually come out and said, you know, I'm one of you. I'm, you know, I've always given my caregiver story because I thought I looked too healthy to actually make a difference as a patient. I'm only this healthy because of cannabis. I was in liver failure, addicted, jonesing. I am craving more pain medication than I had pain for. But the receptor sites were all built up and just going, feed me, feed me, feed me. And I was on more pills for the side effects of the medications I was taking than, than I was on medications for my own disease processes. You know, really? 
And then I went into liver failure and pancreatitis, and I could not have any medication for three days while I was in the hospital. And I was like, no more, no more. I'm not even 40 yet. What am I going to do? How am I going to manage my pain when I'm 60, 70, and 80 if I'm taking this much? Because I was on fentanyl patches, this, um, duragesic patches, duragesic suckers, um, Dilaudid. Uh, then you, you, they rub muscle relaxers. I don't know how many of you've taken muscle relaxers, but they, uh, you get, um, tolerance really quick. So you rotate around between several of them. I, you know, I would do three. Then they gave me dexamphetamine to keep me awake because I'm like narcoleptic on all the, you know, I was so much more dangerous driving on my pain pills and my muscle relaxers, but it's legal for me to work as a nurse that way. I wouldn't. When I was on that much medication, I did ancillary work. I went and audited charts. I, you know, I did physical therapy, stuff where I'm not having to calculate dosages of medication to make sure that my doctors are doing the dosing right because I didn't trust my own brain. You know, so I am patient, Tracy, too. I have just, you know, not actually given cannabis the um, success in the credit that it deserves. You know, and um, I am now back in school working on my bachelor's of science nurse. I have a 4.0 right now. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And um, I couldn't do that without cannabis. I could not do that without cannabis. So get to know your legislators. Go see them in person. If they're, if they are um, having, if, they, if they're being challenged in this, the election in November, just go ahead and call and make your appointment and say, I, am, I have all the confidence that they're going to get reelected or elected, and I want to have an appointment right after. And then, you know, go in and talk to them, guys. Go in and share your stories. You know, um, Tam Parker cried. Tan Parker cried, the one that made the announcement in the Dallas Morning News that he supported medical cannabis. He had us come meet with him at 8.30 on July the 5th. That's a Saturday after the 4th of July, 8.30, he wants us in his office. I know that was a test. That was a big stoner test. I am positive of it. We were there 15 minutes early. I was there actually almost 20 minutes early. <laughs> and he was already in the parking lot sitting on a bench waiting for us. So, and then it was a 30 minute appointment. It, was, it lasted for an hour and 40 minutes. He cried, he cried. You know, the patient stories make a difference. They really do, and we need to connect with them on a personal level. So that's what I have for you. Thank you.